In this demonstration, you'll learn about the ANSYS AIM workspace. When you open a new study in AIM, you can start quickly by using a predefined template containing many of the default settings you'll need, or create a simulation with other methods. This is how the workspace looks after you've imported your geometry in a fluid flow template. The summary grid shows the simulation tasks that were automatically added for this template. An end-to-end -end representation of these tasks is displayed in the Workflow tab of the View panel. Using the Workflow tab, you can easily manage the simulation process by right-clicking on a task to add, delete, or duplicate a task. Each task is a container for all the objects and settings for that task. The starting template determines not only the task sequence, but also many of the values you will need to successfully complete your simulation. To set up the simulation, you can display and edit setup values through property panels or data panels. The difference between the panels is the time to set up and the level of control over your simulation properties. When using the right-click menu to add an object, the property panel is displayed. Property panels define the minimum input requirements for a task, and using them is the fastest way to set up your simulation. If you need more control beyond what the property panels offer, the data panel gives you access to more typical properties and options to customize your simulation. And finally, on some data panels, this icon exposes all of the setup options available for the greatest level of control. Using a template combined with the Workflow tab and the property panels, you have everything you need to successfully create a simulation process. AIM uses color cues to communicate the simulation status. Red draws your attention to items that must be completed to move forward, yellow indicates that you need to update the task, and green confirms that the task is up to date. You'll also notice that some buttons or menu items are highlighted in blue. Blue is a cue for a suggested next step. In addition to color, AIM communicates with you through messages. Progress indicators and message alerts display here. Missing data or potential errors are indicated with messages in both the property and data panels. Alerts and messages are displayed in the Messages tab, and by clicking on the link, you navigate directly to the data panel where the change is required. You can also click on the status bar to display the corresponding messages in the Message tab. The Transcript tab on the View panel displays text output from the solver. Charts specific to the physics type are displayed in the Solution Monitors tab. These arrows behave like browser arrows so you can move backwards and forwards revisiting the objects you have already set up. Use the navigation bar to display a list of properties within a given category, for example, all fluid flow conditions, or jump to a specific object within a task. You can also get to more detailed panels by clicking the links. Now let's demonstrate some of AIM's graphic tools. Several tools are available to pick specific components of the model with selection filters. For instance, select only bodies or select only faces. Or see different views by hiding the edges or faces or making the model translucent. We can also realistically render the model using the enhanced display. The Topology Selector makes easy work of selecting an internal or hidden geometric entity. You can manipulate the model in many ways using a combination of keyboard and mouse. Help in using AIM is easy to find. Just look for the question marks. Concise and specific help is often available within a field. This question mark opens help about this particular data panel. Video and more in-depth help is a click away. This concludes part two of Getting Started with AIM.